Now look at this this uh, restriction. Uh, instead of looking at arbitrary functions, I will look at only the continuous functions. Okay. So continuous functions, you know this uh, notation from calculus is denoted by CAB. So real valued continuous functions on closed bounded interval, that is a real vector space under addition and scalar multiplication of functions, which I defined earlier. So CAB, CAB is really a subset of RAB. So RAB was consisting of all functions uh, from AB to R, real valued functions defined on the closed bound interval. But CAB is only taking the continuous functions defined on closed bound interval, real valued functions. This is a vector space, very important vector space in applications. We one can restrict further and look at those functions which are differentiable at a point. Fix a point in the closed bounded interval. Yeah, fix a point on the closed bounded interval, and uh, the uh, take functions which are differentiable at that point. Okay, then under addition and scalar multiplication. It is a vector space. You know that sum of two functions which are differentiable at a point is again differentiable at that point. Or if you multiply a function by a scalar, and then again it is differentiable at x. Okay. So differentiable function at a single point in a closed bound interval, they form a vector space. I can look at differentiable functions which are uh, differentiable on at every point on the closed bound interval. They will also form a vector space that will be contained in this. Okay. Now, a slightly different example. Look at this second order differential equation. Y double prime plus AY prime plus BY. Yeah, Y is an unknown function. Y double prime plus AY prime plus BY. A and B are real numbers. Look at, and this is a homogeneous differential equation, uh, ordinary differential equation with constant coefficients. And uh, the, this homogeneous equation has the property that if I, if I take two solutions and add them, again, I get a solution. So this is like the homogeneous system of linear equations. I I, I take I, I have certain number of solutions of a system of homogeneous equations. I can add them. I can take any scalar. Uh, I can add take, take any linear combination of solutions of a x equal to zero. Again, I get a solution. Same thing happens for this homogeneous differential equation y double prime plus a y prime plus b y equal to zero. And if i a and b are real numbers, then the set of all functions. Yeah, all the functions, they have to be twice differentiable, right? They have to be twice differentiable. They form a real vector space. Okay. So solutions of homogeneous differential equation, then uh, differentiable functions, continuous functions, all functions or vectors. So such variety of objects are forming vector spaces. Look at another variety of vector space. Take M by N matrices with real entries. So I fix M by M and N. And look at the set of all the matrices of fixed size m by n. Okay, we know how to add matrices of same size, and uh, we know how to take scalar multiple of a matrix m by n matrix. Again, it is an m by n matrix. Yeah, and these two operations, addition of uh, two matrices and the scalar multiple of a matrix, they satisfy those eight axioms of vector space. You can check. So this is the space of m by n matrices. This is again a vector space. Yeah. So these examples indicate that the notion of vector space is very general. Okay. Many kinds of mathematical objects that you have come across since your school days, numbers which are of real numbers or complex numbers, matrices, functions, differentiable functions, okay, all of them are uh, constitute, they, they form vector spaces. So the notion of vector space is very, very general, uh, but it is defined in axiomatic fashion. When we write uh, definition of vector space, we are not telling what is the operation. Yeah. How to add vectors or how to uh, multiply a vector by scalar, we are not specifying that. Instead, we are specifying the properties that these two operations follow. Because when you do computation, you are actually using the properties of these two operations. In a given context, so it is. It is those eight fundamental properties mathematicians extracted that, in large number of computations, 
uh, we are using these eight properties. So they they can they made a axiomatic system, and there is called vector space. And then vector spaces are studied abstractly. And then if you if you uh, prove a theorem about vector spaces, it is simultaneously applicable on the set of matrices, on solutions of differential equations, or solutions of homogeneous linear equations, or the vector space of functions, or vector space of differential functions. Such wide variety of applications it will have. So by abstracting all these objects into the concept of a vector space, we are actually achieving an efficiency. So a result proved about abstract vector space is simultaneously applicable in all these examples. So this is a level of abstraction, and you have to get used to this. Okay. Yeah. Any questions so far? Okay. Let us. Let us look at the concept of subspace of a vector space. So let V be a vector space uh, over a field of scalars. Yeah. A non-empty subset W of V is called a subspace uh, if uh, the following properties hold. The zero vector belongs to W. And if U and V are in W, their sum is in W. And W is closed with respect to scalar multiplication. So W is closed with respect to addition and scalar multiplication. The zero vector of V belongs to W. W is a subset of V. Then W is called a subspace. Okay. Now uh, we have come across many subspaces already in the list of examples that I, I gave you. So take take a vector space and and uh, suppose x1 up to xn are vectors in V and ci's are scalars. Yeah. Then I look at the uh, ci xi. That is a scalar multiple of xi, and add these vectors. Yeah. This is called a linear combination of xi's, and ci's are they called the coefficients of xi in this linear combination. So imagine an abstract vector space. I take finitely many elements, which we call as vectors, and we can form a linear combination. The coefficients are scalars. Okay. So this is called a linear combination. Then uh, a subset S of a vector space over X. Then the linear span of S is the subset of all vectors which are expressible as linear combination of a, of finite subsets of S. So I have an arbitrary subset of a given vector space. Okay. Then I take all possible finite linear combinations where the vectors are drawn from this subset. Okay. So fix a subset of V and then take all linear combinations of vectors of uh, S. And this is called the linear span. So I, I I get other other vectors in the vector space. It may the given linear combination may not be in the set S, right? So uh, then the all possible linear combinations of finitely many elements of S. This is called the linear span. Okay, this is called linear span. So linear span of S is simply sum of ci xi, where n is a finite number, xi's are elements of S, ci's are Scalars. And this LS is LS, we say that LS is spanned by S, or LS is the linear span of S. Okay. So, simple example R2 is linear span of E1, E2. Right? In the Cartesian plane, I have the unit vector i and the unit vector j, and I take all possible linear combinations of i and j, I get all vectors in the plane. Or take the three dimensional space R3. I have three unit vectors i, j, k, okay, and these three unit vectors along the x-axis, y-axis, z-axis. Uh, if I take all possible linear combination of these three unit vectors, I get the entire space. So entire space has infinitely many vectors, but we can we are writing the infinite space as a uh, in terms of a finite set, okay, in terms of finite set that identify a subset of the vector space so that all vectors are actually in the linear span of this finite set. Many times we can do it, many times we cannot do it. Yeah. So we may not be able to find a finite subset of vector space so that all vectors in the given vector space are in the linear span of a finite set. Okay. We'll, we'll come back to that. Okay. So let us see that LS is the smallest subspace of V containing S. Okay. So in inside V, Okay, v, v is my, uh, so v is, v is a big, big space. Okay, 
V is a big space. It can be R n or space of functions. Inside V, I take a finite set or some subset, and I generate all possible linear combinations. Okay, then I get a linear span. Let us show that among all the subspaces of R n, the smallest subspace which contains S is exactly the linear span. Okay, L s is the smallest subspace of V containing S. So first of all, we need to see that L s is a subspace. Yeah, L s is a subspace. So uh, L s consists of linear combination summation x i, x i. Uh, uh, c i x i. The x i is our vectors, and c i is our scalars. So I take two such linear combinations, d i x i. Then I I can add them, and I get another linear combination, c i plus d i times x i. By properties of addition and scalar multiplication, it it is clear that some of these two linear combinations is again a linear combination. Okay, that is in L S. And if I if I take a if I take a linear combination and multiply by a scalar, that is equal to sum of alpha c i uh, x i. That is again a linear combination. Okay. So to show that L S is subspace, I have to show those properties that it is closed with respect to addition, scalar multiplication, and the zero vector lies in this. But zero vector is simply I take c i is equal to zero. So L S is a subspace, and if W is a subspace of V which contains L S, then W is closed with respect to taking linear combinations because W is a subspace. So W is going to contain L S. Yeah. The linear span of S is contained in W, but W is a subspace which contains S because W is closed with respect to addition and scalar multiplication. Okay. Yeah. So this is the uh, every subspace of V contains L S. L S is itself a subspace, and therefore L S is the smallest subspace of V containing S. <clears throat> yeah. So, so many times in a given vector space, I want to study some finitely many objects. Okay. The properties of these finitely many objects, but I am not able to apply the theory of vector spaces. So I then enlarge this finite set of objects. I take all linear combinations of these uh, objects in a given vector space. Then I arrive at the smallest subspace which contains these uh, elements, and that is the linear span. Uh, okay, right. So let's. Uh, this leads to the notion of four fundamental subspaces associated with a to a matrix. This is very important concept in linear algebra. Later on, I will prove a theorem called the fundamental theorem of linear algebra, which is about these four subspaces. these four subspaces are arising out of a given matrix okay our real purpose is to understand matrices and understanding of matrices uh, makes it uh, the solving system of linear equations uh, more efficient uh, and and the the matrices which arise in various uh, operations uh, in linear algebra uh, they are associated to these uh, They, they give rise to these four fundamental subspaces. Let us see what these are. Okay. So I fix a matrix. It is a rectangular matrix M by n, m rows and n columns. I look at the row space. Okay. So the rows, there are m row vectors. The m row vectors, the row vectors lie inside R m. Yeah. So there are m m sorry they they sorry uh, they lie inside R n. The row vectors, the row vectors have uh, an m by n matrix. So each row vector has n components. There are m rows. So the row vectors, the row vectors are lying inside R n. And the column vectors, take the column vectors of the given matrix. They live inside R m. So if I have this m by n matrix. the row vectors live inside rn the column vectors live inside rn okay so take the row vectors there are m row vectors living inside rn and i can take the linear space. that is called the row space okay the m row vectors in a m by n matrix they are all living inside the big space rn 
I take its linear span. That is called the row space. Null space is defined to be set of all vectors in F n so that A x is zero. So these are solutions of homogeneous system of linear equations. Okay, A x equal to zero, and it is clear that this is a subspace because if I if I add two solutions of A x equal to zero, I get another solution. I multiply a solution by a scalar, I get another solution. And zero is a scalar. So this this is a subspace. N a is a subspace, and this is a this is again a subspace of R n. Yeah, sorry, uh, F n. F is my field of scalars. I should be careful. This is F n. So null space is uh, contained in F n, and the row space is also contained in F n. There are two counterparts of these subspaces. Yeah, they, so they, so null the null space of A is the set of solutions of homogeneous linear equations. So N A is a, null, a subspace of F N. The column space of A. Yeah, I look at the column vectors. The column vectors are living inside F M, and take the linear combination of all column vectors of the given uh, matrix, and this this set is called the column space. Okay. Yeah, so the column space, columns of a matrix are the row vectors of transpose. So column space of A is really the row space of A transpose. So in this sense, this this space is is the counterpart of row space. So we have a counterpart of null space also. We have counterpart of null space also. So uh, to understand that. Suppose a x is zero. I take transpose. Then x transpose, a transpose is zero. So these are these are solutions uh, when we multiply a by, on the right by x. But here this x transpose is a column vector, is a row vector. This x is a column vector. X transpose is a row vector, and it transposes n by n matrix. Okay. Yeah. So this gives rise to Uh, this gives rise to the fourth space. This is called the left null space. All vectors in F M so that x a is zero. Yeah, a a is m by n. So I can multiply this by a row vector which has m m components. Okay, so x is in F M so that x a is equal to zero. Right. This is also a system of linear equations, homogeneous linear equations. But now. Uh, now we have how many how many uh, equations are there? As many as number of column vectors, and there are as many indeterminates as the components of this row vector. So this is in a, in a sense this is the counterpart of a x equal to zero. This is the null space of a, and this is the null space of a transpose. Okay, this is the null space of a transpose. Because if x a is equal to zero. This implies a transpose, yeah, x transpose equal to zero. So x transpose will be in the null space of a transpose. So think of x transpose as a column vector with m components. So this is called the left null space. So we have row space of a, we have null space of a, we have column space of a, and left null space of a. So these are the four subspaces which are derived from the given matrix. So our system of linear equations give rise to a matrix M by N matrix, and this M by N matrix give rise to four fundamental subspaces associated with the matrix: the row space, the null space, the column space, and left null space. Okay, these four spaces are intimately connected. Okay, we'll continue to return to this, and later on I will draw a diagram. Which connects the four subspaces. Okay.